This is a trigger warning. Today's piece contains violence, sexual assault, and murder. I will be covering sensitive topics. Hi, I'm Barbie Fanagan. Welcome to True Crime Terror Tales. And if you're new here, please subscribe and like. Today, we're going to talk about the deadly Briley brothers. They terrorized Richmond, Virginia for about seven months. They were finally captured. But that's not the end of the story. You won't believe what happens next. In 1979, terror destroyed the peace and calm of Richmond, Virginia. A group of thugs went on a rampage, robbing, raping, torturing, and killing people all over the area. The random murder spree left 11 innocent victims dead. The culprits, three brothers, Linwood, James, and Anthony Briley, and their friend Duncan Meekins. It all began in 1971. 57-year-old Orlean Christian collapsed in her backyard. It appeared to be a heart attack. However, the funeral home discovered she'd been shot. Detectives figured out that the bullet came from the house across the street. The murder weapon? A rifle found in 16-year-old Linwood Briley's bedroom. He confessed to the shooting, saying Christian was sick and she was going to die anyway. His lawyer convinced a judge that the shooting was an accident. Linwood's punishment? One year of reform school. A couple of years later, James Briley followed his big brother's footsteps. While fleeing from a robbery, he shot at a police officer. James was sent to juvenile detention. I was not this animal that the press had made me out to be. Linwood was the brains of the group. James provided muscle. Anthony was the youngest. Detectives called him a follower. The brothers grew up here in the East Highland area of Richmond with their parents. James Briley Sr. worked at a factory and their mother Bertha was a cafeteria worker. Both are described as kind people who loved their four children. Mrs. Briley is one of the sweetest ladies you'd ever want to meet. But there were signs of trouble. The eldest brother, Edward, moved to North Carolina with relatives when he was a teenager. The three remaining boys had a fixation with dangerous pets. They had tarantulas, a boa constrictor, and poisonous snakes. They enjoyed watching the snakes eat live mice. The Briley's were bullies at school and in the neighborhood. Their antics drove their mother out of the house. She separated from their father. James stayed, but he slept with his bedroom door locked from the inside. 16-year-old Duncan Meekins lived next door to the Briley's, who were now in their early 20s. They were thieves and drug dealers, and they let him come along. March 12, 1979, the men forced their way into William and Virginia Butcher's home. They tied the couple up, robbed them, and then set the house on fire. The couple escaped, and the Butchers were the only survivors of the Briley's killing spree. The next day, the Briley gang broke into Michael McDuffie's home beat, robbed, and shot the serviceman to death. On another day, Linwood shot 28-year-old Edric Clark over a drug dispute involving Meekins. Next, the four men followed 76-year-old Mary Gowen home, forced their way in, and all four men sexually assaulted the grandmother before they fatally shot her. The brothers continued their deadly attacks, targeting a 17-year-old neighbor. Linwood crushed the boy's head simply because he looked at Linwood's car. They fatally beat three senior citizens with baseball bats. The attack started as robberies and ended with murder. They used guns, knives, forks, scissors, whatever they could get their hands on. On September 14th, the popular disc jockey, Johnny Gallagher, was playing with his band at a club. He stepped into the alley for fresh air. The Barley gang grabbed him and threw him into the trunk of his Lincoln and drove to an island on the James River. Linwood opened the trunk, pulled Gallagher out, and shot him point blank in the head. He stole his turquoise ring and a watch and found six dollars in his wallet. The gang dumped Gallagher in the river and drove off with his car. It was later found with a CB radio gone. Police searched for nearly a week until they finally found Gallagher's body trapped in the river's debris. One day, the Barley gang decided to rob a neighbor named Harvey Wilkerson. He was a drug dealer and fellow snake enthusiast. Harvey hesitated when the men approached, but decided it was best to let them in. 
What happened next was the worst thing you could ever imagine. The men raped and sodomized Wilkerson's pregnant girlfriend, Diane Barton. Then they shot Harvey, Diane, and their five-year-old son. After months of investigating, detectives finally caught the evil killers. Meekins was still a minor and caught the plea deal to avoid the death sentence. He told police one horrifying detail after another, confessing crimes that investigators had no idea the gang had committed. Linwood accidentally told on himself when he came face to face with a detective who was good friends with Johnny Gallagher. He had this ring on his finger and my dad seen it and said, that's, that's Johnny's, Johnny's ring. ring. That's, Johnny's, that's watch. Johnny's watch. And that's how they linked and that's the Brawleys to caught. Johnny's murder. Meekins turned state's evidence. He was supposed to do 12 to 15 years, but he's been in prison for 40 years living under a secret identity. He's rejected every time he comes up for parole. Anthony received a life sentence. He's in the Augusta Correctional Center where he lives as an outcast due to the nature of his crimes. His parole is repeatedly turned down as well. Linwood and James received death sentences and were sent to death row at Mecklenburg Correctional Center. The Briley brothers became ruthless prison leaders due to Linwood's intelligence and James Brute's strength. But their execution dates grew closer, so they decided to try to break out of the most secure prison in Virginia. The Barley brothers, along with four other death row inmates, put their plan into action on May 31, 1984. They took over a guard station and held the officers hostage. The inmates put on their uniforms and riot gear as disguises. They had a hostage announce that there was a live bomb. It was actually a TV covered with a blanket. An emergency vehicle was sent in. The inmates carried the TV out on a stretcher. The state-of-the-art security gates were opened and the six inmates drove away to freedom. Authorities implemented a multi-state manhunt for the condemned killers. This was the largest death row inmate escape in American history. They caught two of the inmates the next day. About a week later, two more were found close to the Canadian border. The Briley brothers stayed on the lam for three weeks until a phone call to a relative who was under surveillance led authorities to an auto shop in Philadelphia. The brothers were hiding there. FBI agents arrested the Briley's outside this North Philadelphia auto customizing shop. The Briley's uncle, Johnny Lee Counsel, he'll be charged with harboring fugitives. Convicted murderers James Briley and his brother Linwood had been on the run for nearly three weeks. Less than five months after the escape, 30-year-old Linwood was put to death by electrocution. I, of course, chose to escape because I'm innocent and if you're innocent, I believe that you're supposed to be free. Claims of innocence didn't help James. He was executed on April 18, 1985 at 28 years old. The last four inmates were eventually executed. A little known fact, there was a seventh inmate. His name was Dennis Sutton. He planned most of the escape, but decided to drop out at the last minute because he thought his appeal was going to go through. It didn't, and he was executed. And when the guards cleared out his cell, they found a diary with all of the plants behind the breakout. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to see you the next time. Bye-bye.